<clears throat> it is found in the moist woods under trees plentiful in the Unkai Valley near the Chumi and in the lower thickets at Katberg. The plant has a bundle of roots with fleshy tubers at their extremities, cylindrical pointed at both ends, white and nearly transparent. These tubers are steeped in cold water, and the infusion is given to infants on the day of birth as a purgative. Purgative? What's the purgative? Laxative. Hey everyone, my name is Brian, and welcome back to another episode of This is a Plant. And today, we're gonna be talking about the humble spider plant. Botanical name, Chlorophytum commosum, variety Vitatum. This is in my top three of favorite plants for a number of reasons. First, it's really hardy due to its tuberous roots. I'll explain that later. Second, it shoots out these little plantlets or offshoots and you could propagate them and make even more plants. Third, it really has beautiful foliage. Well, if your cat would, um stop chomping on them, but they are said to be non-toxic to cats and dogs. A lot of websites say cats are attracted to this plant because the leaves contain a chemical that causes mild hallucinations. Well, that's interesting, right? Too bad it's a big fat lie. I drove myself crazy trying to find a study that these websites keep citing. I use various search terms, nothing. Um, nothing on Google Books, nothing on Google Scholar, nothing on Google Google. And when they do link to a site, the link doesn't work. Two websites that I found cite North Dakota State University, but when I looked on their website, there's nothing. But they did have this nifty feature called Ask an Expert. So I did. The horticulturist that did reply to me said that he nor his colleague know of any study that mentions this. I'm just gonna guess that cats are attracted to this plant because of its foliage. It's just fun to smack around. Combine that with the randomness and craziness of cats, then I can't really blame you into thinking this plant was the thing that caused it. The oldest mention of this myth was on a forum post from 2004. Some guy asked if the spider plant is hallucinogenic because his friend says it's like LSD for cats and that's why they're attracted to them. Replies basically said that his friend might be on LSD himself. So guys, maybe I missed something. If you think I did, please leave it in the comments or shoot me a message. They're not hallucinogenic to you, Misty, are they? Huh? Anyway, other Chlorophytum commosum varieties include the Bonnie, which is pretty much just a curly version of the Vitatum. The Chlorophytum commosum variegata is pretty much the reverse of Vitatum. The Vitatum has a white stripe in between two greens, where the variegata is a green stripe in between two white ones. Another one is Chlorophytum laxum or Chlorophytum bichetti which is not a variety, but a different species. It's often confused with the variegata, but I believe the laxums leaves are just a little bit broader. I also couldn't find out if laxums put out offshoots or not. So if you own one, please let me know in the comments. Another species of Chlorophytum is Chlorophytum viridescens. Some people call it the Hawaiian spider plant. The green is much brighter on this, it looks glossier, and it's like neon almost. So let's move on to some basic care tips of the Chlorophytum commosum. The spider plant prefers bright indirect light so it can grow, but can survive and tolerate lower light levels. Many websites say to avoid direct sunlight so it won't scorch the leaves, but I did grow a lot of these on my balcony before, which received about mm, three to five hours of direct sunlight during the summer, and it grew like crazy. So take that for what it's worth and experiment with your own spider plant if you want. In terms of soil, Let's keep it basic. Any potting mix will work if you're putting it in a pot and if it's indoors. Garden soil for if you want it in the ground. Spider plants in pots like to dry out slightly in between waterings to grow, but they can survive and tolerate underwatering. So when it comes to nutrients and fertilizers, many sites have ranging advice, probably because everyone's using just a different brand of fertilizer like liquid fertilizer or slow-release fertilizer or um, a type of compost. 
I recommend using any indoor plant fertilizer you have and make sure to follow the directions on the back. A rule of thumb, it's best to fertilize only during the spring and summer months if you live in a place with four seasons. That's winter, fall, and all the other ones. If you live in a place with only wet and dry seasons, well, you'll fertilize a bit more often, but do check the directions. Lastly, they prefer warm temperatures and high humidity to grow, but they can survive and tolerate cooler temps and drier air. All right, now let's repot this bad boy. I had four spider plants to repot at various stages of life and death. The first one we'll repot is my most recent addition. I got this one about four days ago and haven't watered it since I got it. And it was still wet when I went to repot it. So my goal for this one is to replace the soil with my own mix and repot it in the same pot. So you can see here, I took it out of the pot and I can already see that there is a lot of root rot going on. This spider plant was just way overwatered. Let me show you how spider plant roots should look like. This spider plant was the one in the terracotta pot. Terracotta pots help a lot with spider plants because they allow for better evaporation and airflow. I made a video about pots before, I'll link it to the bottom. While the spider plant is hardy against underwatering and neglect, it really doesn't do well to overwatering and constant moisture. So it's important that you let your soil dry out before watering again. Here's what you can do if you encounter any plant with root rot during your repotting process. All you have to do is remove the rotted roots as best as you can. And it's okay if you accidentally remove some healthy ones too. It's also all right if you don't get all of them, but we just want as much space for new roots to be able to grow. I had an overhead shot while I was repotting this, but I accidentally deleted the file and didn't have a backup. So I'm totally bummed about that. So let me just zoom in as close as I can to describe to you how you can tell if your spider plant roots are rotted or starting to. Normally, spider plant roots and a lot of roots are white and translucent. When rot sets in, it could start at any point on the root. It'll be darker or a black color. You can discard that part by cutting or pulling it off. A noticeable rot like this one even feels different. The rotted roots are mushy and if you press hard enough, it just sloughs off. It's actually kind of gross. Hopefully there are still some healthy or somewhat healthy roots left. Some roots towards the top are dark, but they still feel firm, so I'm gonna keep those. But now we have another problem. The soil in between the roots are still wet. Before I can water this again, I need it to be dry, otherwise it may rot the rest of the roots. So you can either wash off all the soil as best as you can, or you can leave it like this and then leave it out on the counter overnight until it dries out. Or you can go ahead and pot it with dry soil and just don't water it for a day or two until it dries out. Most of the time this technique does work, but there's still that small chance where your plant is just too far gone. And don't worry, spider plants and plants like it can withstand underwatering. Why is that? Because the chlorophytums have thick, fleshy, tuberous roots. Let's take a look. You see how the roots start off thin, then it enlarges towards the middle and then thins out again? That is the tuber. Tubers are storage organs which store nutrients and water. Some plants use tubers to regrow during the winter months or to survive during droughts. Anyway, we humans seem to love eating tubers. Some are definitely delicious, while some have different effects. The excerpt I read in the beginning talked about Camosum's roots were used as a laxative. I can't confirm whether or not it's nature's X-lax, but please don't try that at home. Another species with possible effects is the Chlorophytum borivinalium. It's found in India and its Hindi name is Safed Musli. Let me know in the comments if I pronounced that right. The tubers of the Borivillianum is dried out and it's usually used in a lot of herbal medicines to treat some minor ailments, but it's mostly well known to be used as an aphrodisiac. Anyway, now it's time to pot these spider plants as you normally would your other plants. Put a base of soil, measure the height you want the plant to be at, but don't forget to leave a little space between the lip of the pot and the top of the soil. Pour more soil in while shaking and maybe even using something to poke soil in between the roots and those hard to reach places. And that's it. Remember to give this a good shower if you're not letting it dry out because of root rot. I'm gonna be covering propagation for the Camosum in the next video. So if you enjoyed this video and you learned something, please give me a like, a comment, subscribe if you want, and 
And yeah, so I also always underestimate the time it takes to actually make these videos. So I appreciate all you guys who gave me a pass on the whole one video per week thing. That's still a goal, okay? But I really don't want to sacrifice the quality of these videos. So for now, it's going to be when I post it up. Hopefully no longer than three weeks. Oh God, did I jinx myself? My name is Brian and thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.